Hey guys, it's Mr. Ng. Um, we have a big old test coming up, so I wanted to uh, make a short video to kind of review some of the notes. I want to go through this super fast so that I could help you with your studies and just remind you of the key facts you got to know for the exam. So let's hop right into it. Here on the slide, you just got to know that the cell membrane is super important, right? It, it's, it does all of the communication from cell to cell. It's all done through the cell membrane namely through these little sugary things, which I'll talk about soon. The one slide that you really got to know is you got to know about the three parts of the cell membrane. Number one, the lipid bilayer, the gooey part, right? This is this yellow part. That's the lipid bilayer. It's made out of grease. Um, this greasy lipid bilayer is made out of a molecule called the phospholipid. This little yellow thing is a phospholipid. It's got a head that loves water and a tail that hates water right um that's a phospholipid the fancy word for loving water is hydrophilic right like uh fishies are hydrophilic so let's just draw a little fish right and then uh the bottom part is the tails right these two little tails they hate water like a cat so let's just draw a cat right there you go, that, that makes sense, right? This is our analogy for a phospholipid, a fish-headed cat, right? Hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tails. And these molecules, because they're set up this way, um, they naturally form this, this two-layered skin of the cell, right? It's very fluid, it moves around uh, nonstop. So that's number one. The cell membrane is made of the lipid bilayer, this, this layer of grease made of phospholipids. Number two, um, the cell membrane is also made out of these little pink jelly bean things. These are all proteins. And these proteins can be channels, like a tunnel, for materials to go through, or they can be pumps that uses ATP to pump things against the concentration gradient, right? Right. And then number three, oligosaccharides or carbohydrate chains, the sugary chains. These blue guys are sugar chains. And their job is to tag the cell. They tag the cell so that, you know, you know what cells belong to you. So, again, there are three parts of the cell membrane. The lipid bilayer, the protein channels and pumps, and then the sugar oligosaccharides, the carbohydrate chains. Those are synonymous terms for us. Good. Hope that helps. Let's keep going. Here. In this slide, I was really trying to drive home the job of those oligosaccharides, right? So in the prior slide, there were these green little hexagons. These hexagons represent sugar molecules, and they're kind of chained up. I'm drawing these horrible hexagons. Just bear with me, right? But these sugar molecules, um, their job is to, you know, indicate what belongs and what doesn't. They tag the cell, uh, very similar to um, your blood type, right? Or uh, MHCs, which are... Uh, major histocompatibility complexes. But basically, um, they're the reason why you can't get an organ transplant from a stranger because your body will reject it because of the sugars on your cells. On top of knowing the structure of the cell membrane, you got to know what diffusion is. Diffusion is passive, meaning it happens without extra energy. It happens passively. Think back to when I sprayed that perfume and it just kind of spread throughout the classroom. There was no need to fan it. It did it on its own. It went from a high concentration, high concentration, down to a low concentration, right? Notice that this diagram is kind of going down until it gets to equilibrium, where it's kind of going back and forth equally. This is equilibrium. This is what happens when diffusion kind of finishes and all the solutes are equally. Um, on either side of the membrane, on this semi-permeable membrane, okay? And then you do need to know the word concentration gradient. When you go in this direction from high to low, you say that we go with the concentration gradient. Sometimes you would go backwards, right? You would pump it backwards, then you're going against the concentration gradient, okay? Let's reduce this slide down to just the two facts that you got to know. Diffusion is passive. It doesn't need extra energy. Diffusion has a definition. It's when solutes go from high concentration to low concentration. If you know that, you're pretty good. Let's keep going. There are 
some specific types of diffusion. Let's go to the bottom one first, facilitated diffusion. That's when things go through a protein channel. Not all things can go through the lipid bilayer. The lipid bilayer is greasy. And well, non-greasy things don't mix with grease, right? Like we've all tried to mix uh, water and grease. They don't mix, right? So only greasy things can go through and only small things can go through like O2 or CO2 or tiny little organics like, you know, methane or, or, or ethanol, like tiny little non-polar things and tiny little hydrophobic things, right? Tiny little oily things can go through the lipid bilayer. The bigger stuff, the charged stuff, right? Like all the little salts that you might eat, right? All the things that have a positive or negative charge, they cannot go through. They'll bounce right off. So they got to go through a protein channel, right? Or things that are a little bit bigger, like a, a, a sugar, right? They're, that's kind of big. That, that will bounce right off the lipid bilayer. So it will also need to go through a protein channel. So diffusion through the lipid bilayer only happens to, for tiny things, tiny uncharged things. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, tiny little nonpolar things. For bigger things or charged things, for bigger things or charged molecules, you got to go through a protein channel, right? Not a pump because we're talking about diffusion. The diffusion, again, is passive. In terms of diffusion, the one thing you really got to know is osmosis. A lot of questions on this test on osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. You got to know your tonic solutions, right? Um, if it's just right, like this hypotonic, uh, like this, like this isotonic solution, it's just right, then it's all good. The the concentration of solute inside and outside is the same, so it goes in and out kind of equally. The hypotonic solution, this is the one where we always drew the little face, like it's all about to blow up, right? This is when the water is super pure, so all the salts on the inside. The water chases the salt, so all the water goes in, blows up this cell. This is a hypotonic solution. Think of this as just super clean water. And then in a hypertonic solution, hyper, it means it's super salty. This means this is like really, really salty, right? Like when we uh, dried out the plant cells with salt, right? The salt was on the outside, the water chases the salt, these things shoveled up, and I typically drew a picture like this where it's all like yeah shove it up good osmosis you got to know your three tonic solutions hypotonic super clean hypertonic super salty isotonic just right and here i had that story about honey honey can be super old why because it's super hypertonic when a germ lands on honey it shrivels up and dies so that's why this guy was able to have old egyptian honey and he fed all his friends with it. And it turned out that old Egyptian honey was actually the, the burial cases for a bunch of uh, baby pharaohs. But, you know, how were they supposed to know? It's not like they were archaeologists like they were. Moving on. Active transport. There's going to be two types of active transport. We're going to talk about molecular transport and then bulk transport. In this slide, we're only going to talk about molecular transport. Molecular transport occurs when um, you have a protein pump. Notice how this looks like a protein channel, but instead this thing is kind of moving and changing shape to grab solutes or grab things and move it all onto one side. And I want you to notice there's only two particles here, but a bunch of particles here. Meaning a pump can build a crowd. A, a pump can work against diffusion and go against the concentration gradient. And it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of ATP. In fact, those are really the two biggest facts that you gotta know about molecular pumps. Number one, it takes energy. And number two, it goes against the gradient, meaning instead of letting things spread out, it builds up stuff on one side. Like in this here neuron, right? This is a nerve. And nerves only fire when you have a whole bunch of sodium on one side, more sodium on one side, so that there's what's called a a membrane potential, right? So active transport will move all the stuff to one side. It, it does the opposite of diffusion. There's no equilibrium here. It, it builds disequilibrium, okay? It builds a concentration gradient, good? That's a molecular pump. 
Another type of active transport is bulk transport, where you move a whole bunch of things at once. For instance, when these secretory vesicles move towards the cell membrane, they're being carried by tiny little kinesin molecules. There's these little guys who ride on little microtubules, right? And they take a ton of ATP, right? But when you ooze things out, out, exit, exo, exocytosis is when you move things out. And when cells eat things and have things come in, endocytosis, right? Like this amoeba is eating what looks like maybe a clump of euglena or some sort of photosynthetic thing, right? But it's eating a whole big chunk of it. When it eats a big old chunk, we call that phagocytosis, right? Cell eating. This is very different from pinocytosis. Here, you might not be able to see it, but little bubbles might be oozing into this amoeba as it drinks little bubbles of liquid, right? Pinocytosis cell drinking, right? Both of these types, exocytosis and endocytosis, these are both types of bulk transport. When you move a whole bunch of things at once, they're very active, they take a lot of ATP. All right, so uh, we went over the parts of the cell membrane, the lipid bilayer, the protein channels and pumps, and the carbohydrate chains. We went over diffusion, it's passive. It goes with the gradient, makes things go to equilibrium. We went through active transport. Um, it uses a lot of energy. It does not build equilibrium. It builds like a concentration gradient. Thank you very much for watching and good luck on your studies.